Thanks for joining this Doug webinar hosted by MS Dynamics World. Today, we're going to be talking about the Power Platform Admin Center and how to best use it in your day-to-day -day use with uh, Dynamics, but also Power Apps. First, let me introduce myself. My name is Ashley Steiner. I am an independent consultant, primarily focused on Dynamics uh, CE, uh, but also work with some Power Platform um, items as well. I am a Microsoft Business Applications MVP. I was awarded with that last year. And then I also co-host a podcast called the Dynamics Hot Dish. If you haven't checked it out, make sure you do. I have put a QR code up there that makes it easy for you to subscribe. And I also work with a nonprofit called TechFluent. I work as the executive assistant, basically making the day-to-day -day things happen. TechFluent offers uh, dynamics and power platform training to folks that come from marginalized communities, under-resourced communities, really focused on trying to increase diversity in tech. So my experience in this space, I've been working with Dynamics for over 13 years, back when it was just called CRM. So for those of you out there who are OGs, welcome. We now work in this CE world. The majority of my career has actually been working on the end user side, not so much as a consultant. So I really align well with those admins, managers, people that are working on internal systems. I specialize in integrating the business process with technology, so looking at how a business works, how your teams work, and then making sure that the system supports that. And then I also have listed the first party apps that I work with and specialize in. Now let's get to the good stuff. So what are we going to talk about today? Obviously, we're going to talk about the admin center. What is it? Why do we need it? And then how does that actually relate to the legacy settings that we're all used to? Well, then we're going to go through the different sections of the admin center, environments, analytics, resources, help and support, and then we're actually going to jump into a demo and walk through these different areas together. First, what is the Power Platform Admin Center? Really, it's the new place for you to administrate settings, features, things like that for all of your Power Apps, which includes obviously Dynamics because that is essentially Power App. It really gives you an, uh, one place where you can easily find what you're looking for from all of these uh, pers all of these items here that you see on the left hand side. So your environments, this is where you can view, create, manage environments, upgrades, things like that. That all happens there. Like I said, we're going to jump into a demo to see all of this later. Analytics, you can actually get detailed key metrics on who is using your system and how they're using your system. That's one of the things that I've always wanted Microsoft to provide to us. I just want to have a list of people that are logging in. I just want to know if people are actually using the system that I've put out there. So this analytics section actually does that for us. You'll see that there are a couple of items here in preview, the billing and the data down at the bottom. So these are things that Microsoft is previewing, still getting feedback on, making updates and changes to it. So you will see updates over the time until it does come out of preview. Billing gives you a summary of your environments, shows you any licenses that need attention or the consumption of your environments, how many you have remaining, things like that. The data down at the bottom, which is a preview, is how you can manage your connections. The settings area is where you can uh, manage all of your settings for your environments. It's actually from your tenant perspective. We'll talk about when we jump into the demo why it's good and then why it's bad and where you'd want to maybe do your settings elsewhere. The resources gives you the ability, that's where like you can view your capacity, your flow usage, things like that, that really help to make sure that your system is running efficiently and effectively. Help and support essentially is how you get reach out to the Microsoft support group. So if you're having a technical issue, something's not quite working right, you can go to your technicals or the technical support with Microsoft there. The data integration is also a new thing that has really um, come about with the integration with FNO and the Dataverse. So that's where like dual right comes in. So that's also one of those new areas that has been added to the admin center. And then the policies is basically just policies that you set for your environment, data privacy policies, access policies, things like that. You know, and, and those can be handled at a system wide level. So now to the question that probably everybody is wondering, do I still need to use the, the legacy settings, right? So this is where you kind of go to that gear up in the top right corner that we're all used to working with dynamics. And so do we still need to use that? And the answer is no, 
kind of. I put here the uh, the link to the admin center. One of the things I always like to uh, tell people is that you know the admin center is part of that new UCI rollout of the interface. A few years ago, Microsoft had us all move from the legacy UI into this new UI, and the admin center is part of that. However, there are some areas of the settings that have not been updated to the new UI. So that's why I say kind of, because even if you use the admin center to access certain things, it will still take you to the legacy interface for, for managing that. But you can get to it from the admin center. And Microsoft is making updates to that and moving all of the settings to the new UI. And you'll notice that the, the most recent one was the security. So security moved to the new UI in uh, June of this year. So if you have not checked it out, I would definitely recommend it. Um, it rolls things up and makes it a lot easier, um, in my opinion, actually to view and see. So I'll go ahead and, you know, throw that in as part of the demo just to show you what it looks like. But that was pretty, pretty exciting to see that they are constantly moving things over to the new UI. You'll see that I have a pro tip there in the blue. Basically anything that has that, you know, open, like that little open icon next to it in the admin center, that's kind of your hint that it's going to open in that legacy UI. And so you'll see that over time, you're probably going to get less of those pop out icons. All right, so now jumping into the different sections of the admin center, like I said, we will walk through a demo later. So we'll actually walk through how to get around this and, and what is good to, to know where information is. But just as a high level view, this is what your environment details will look like. You'll see that you can look at each environment differently. So you can have, you know, as many environments within your tenant as you want, and you can manage them all individually. So you'll see here it has things in the middle. You can see like your updates, your auditing, You'll also see your resources are over on the side. So that's where you can manage what apps you have added, you know, either from App Source or if you have additional um, first party apps, things like that. This is where you can really kind of set the, you know, what your environment includes and the, the base settings for that environment. The next thing I always like to point out to people are these resources. So that was that section on the right hand side um, that I walked through. So this is where you can manage all of your apps. You'll want to make sure that this is something that you know about. You know what apps you've added. You may have added some additional first party apps. You can see here I have customer voice added into this environment. But one thing to know is that there are times when you will need to manually update those apps. I think of like the LinkedIn sales navigator or something that you've potentially brought in from app source. Those don't always get updated automatically. So you'll want to make sure that you have some sort of regular cadence where you come in here, check to see if those updates are available, and then you can go ahead and update them there. The settings, um, this is again, poor environment. Um, so you have the ability to come in here. This is what that legacy settings now lives. One of the things that I love that Microsoft has added here is a search bar. Uh, so I always remember um, back in the day, even taking certification exams, it'd be like, okay, if you wanted to update the language, where would you go and do that? And you had to like say, okay, I'm gonna go to settings and then I'm gonna go to administration if that's even right. And then, you know, you have to know how to navigate to all of these settings. Now you have a search bar, which is amazing because it makes it really easy to find what you're looking for. Things are still grouped together, kind of like they were in the legacy settings, but it really just nicely puts things here together. In the demo, we'll walk through the different areas of this and even show you that pop out icon. Analytics is the next section that I think is important to talk about. So this is where you'll see how people are using and interacting with the different pieces of the Power Platform. So obviously first is the Dataverse. The Dataverse is where you can see interactions that people are taking over time frame. So this is where you can see, okay, are people updating records, creating records? Are they even just logging in? You can look at it over a time frame. It goes back 30 days. So just make sure you know that if you need something past that, it's not going to be there. You can export this into Excel. It's a really cool, easy way to, to gather some of that reporting um, that you need on who's using the system and how they're using the system. The next one here is the Power Automate. So you want to make sure, obviously, that you're within your usage of flows. You do get, um, I think, a certain number of flows with your Dynamics licensing. I'm not a licensing expert, so don't hold me to that. But you want to make sure that you're staying under your limit, but also that your flows are running effectively, right? So if things are getting canceled or getting stuck, this is a really easy place to go and find that information. 
And then power apps. So obviously you can build power apps that are not dynamics. And so this is where you would go to find out the metrics and usage for those additional power apps, things like Canvas apps that are not dynamics based. Within the resources, this is where you can see things like the capacity. This is gonna show you the size of your database. So it's something to really important to keep an eye on. Obviously you get a certain number of um, gigabytes with your environment, with your licensing, and then just on top of that with your first party apps. These metrics can help you make decisions on how to control the size of your database. Obviously you can always buy more storage, but storage is expensive. So this can help you really make some good decisions on, on how to clean, um, your, clean up your database of some of those items or records that you no longer need. It also shows you your D365 apps here. So that's that resources, like the things that you've added on first party apps, app source, things like that. But it doesn't really let you do anything here. So the, the place I would recommend managing this is per environment, um, but this will show you the whole tenant, but you can't do anything. You can't remove them, you can't update them. So it's nice, to, I guess, to see on a whole level like what you have installed uh, across the tenant, but it's not really helpful for, for actually any sort of management of those apps. The portals, obviously, if you have some sort of portal, um, which I'm guessing they'll change this to probably power pages at some point in the future, this is how you can manage your, your portals, open them up, um, configure them, get access, you know, that kind of thing. So all of your portal management is actually here within the admin center. The help and support section is obviously really important as this is where you can reach out to the Microsoft support team for things that you're, you're finding maybe a bug or an issue or something's just not quite working right. They also have put a power virtual agent in there going to recommend solutions for you based on what you're typing in, which I think is really cool that they're using their own technology. So I really appreciate that. One thing I always like to point out to people is that the help and support and reaching out to Microsoft does not uh, does not cover any of the custom development. So if you if you have questions on like JavaScript that you've put in or something that is not native to the the way that Microsoft has implemented the system, they will not be able to assist just because they don't you know they don't support or manage those. So you would likely need to go to your partner um, for help with those. So something I always like to point out um, because Microsoft will tell you no that they can't help you if it is truly custom. All right, and let's go ahead and jump into the demo. So you can see here, I have the admin center pulled up and this is your homepage of the admin center. It's gonna show you some highlights, unread messages, things like that. Now diving into the different areas, you'll see that all of your navigation items are here on the left-hand side. These are gonna be the things that we just walked through in the PowerPoint. So let's go ahead and start at the top uh, with environments. Uh, so once this page loads, you'll see all of the different environments that you have within your tenant. You'll probably have a couple of sandboxes, like a dev, a QA, and then your production environment, obviously. Uh, so you can see here in the type that it's gonna show you what kind of uh, environment it is, and then you know walk you through the different, you know the region managed or not. If you click on the actual environment, it's going to open up to that kind of like overview settings page. So it's going to give you the details of the environment, like the URL. It's going to tell you if there's any security group assigned to it in Microsoft 365. Again, you'll see your auditing. Um, you'll see that you do have updates uh, that you can turn on. I would definitely recommend not turning on new updates directly in a production environment. You'll see that you have your resources over here on the right hand side um, and then your access as well. Up here in the ribbon, you'll see that you have the option to go to your resources, which is going to be your Dynamics 365 apps. You can also access that here and then you have your settings and then you have your backup and restore. You can take manual backups at any time and then you can also obviously restore your environment if necessary. Going into the Dynamics 365 apps, uh, this is going to be all of the apps that are in your environment. So again, like I said, this is environment specific. Uh, there is a way to see the tenant across the tenant, but you can't manage anything there. You'll see here that I do have a couple of things that are ready for update. Um, so what I can do is I can go ahead and click update here and it would update um, that, you know, that app for me. If you wanted to add an app, um, you just have this uh, button here that says install app and you can go through all of the things that are available directly through Microsoft. Or you have the ability to open app source and go find some really cool tools that developers have made available for us all to use.
I'm gonna go back to my production settings here and I'm gonna click on the settings button. This is where the legacy settings are now located. Again, we did take a screenshot of this and this was in the PowerPoint, but to show you, obviously the search is really cool. It's probably one of my favorite things that has been added. So if I wanted to work on users, you can see all I need to do is type in user and then anything related to users is gonna show up, whether or not it actually has user in the name of it, which is, is really nice because sometimes you don't know what the name of it is what you're looking for, but you kind of know what it does and how it can help and things like that. So it's, it's a really nice search option. From there, you can go ahead and just select on users and it's gonna go ahead and pull up all of those people. So I'm gonna go, go ahead and go back to settings and show you just a couple of things that I think are really important to know about the settings. So obviously the first thing is this uh, pop out. This is that little icon that I was telling you about. So anything that has this pop out next to it is going to open up in the legacy UI. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on business unit. Sometimes it takes a few seconds to load just because um, obviously it's the legacy UI and it does, it's technically deprecated. So Microsoft does not put a ton of power behind it. So we're gonna go ahead and come back to that once it does lo load. And what I wanna show you is the new security roles um, in the new UI. This is actually part of the wave one release in 2023. Like I said, it came out in June of 2023 available for, for all in, um, all tenants. Before, when you clicked on that, it opened up in the legacy, just like the business units would. But now you have the ability to actually see all of your security roles directly here um, in the new UI. And if I wanted to you know, look at or edit these um, security roles, you can see that it's even in the new UI to be able to, to, be able to see what these security roles do. I think this is really a lot easier to see. Um, it has kind of this none, you're not dealing with those little pies anymore. You have this compact grid view. What it'll do is it'll actually push things closer together so you don't have to scroll. Um, and so I can go ahead and turn that on. And then you can change here only assign tables versus all tables. So if you wanted to see whether or not um, they have any, some sort of security to a table, you know, you could, you know, show all things versus just the ones they do or do not have assigned. So, so it's a lot more flexible. It's really easy to use. It's, it's actually a really, really cool way to, to manage security roles. So if you haven't taken a look at this yet, um, I definitely would make a note to do so because it's, it's a lot easier to use in my opinion. So we're gonna go back to the business units now in the legacy, um, it finally loaded. Uh, so you'll see here that this is that old interface. Like I said, anything with that little pop-out icon is gonna show up here in this legacy format. You'll use it the same way, but uh, over time, obviously Microsoft is going to be moving these legacy UIs into the new interface. All right, so those are the settings. Um, like I said, you can come through here, you can peruse and find what you're looking for. Things are bundled up together. You can go ahead and you know do your drop downs or you can do your search uh, to find what you're looking for. Next, we have the analytics. So this is gonna be where you want to find information on who is accessing the systems and how and what they're doing. So again, as a CE person, I focus mainly in this Dataverse area. Um, and you'll see that it does give you the ability to see, you know, like who's active in the system. You can change your filters here. You can change your date range. You can even change environments um, and you can change your date range. Like I said, it does go 30 days in the past. So I'm going to go ahead and hit apply here and it'll show you how many active users you've had in that time executions. You can even see, you know, what they're doing in the system. You have the ability to download. Um, so you can say, oh, I want to see all of my users, you know, by the uh, operations that they're performing. And that'll give you who's been reading, just like looking at stuff versus who's updating, creating, deleting, things like that. So you'll be able to see that you can even look at people by business unit, security role. It just gives you a lot of flexibility to be able to look at who's actually using the system. Like I said, you can also look at Power Automate here. So I don't have any flows turned on in the system. So this is going to show no data. If you do have any flows running, this is a great place to, to come to see how many flows are running. And if you're having any issues, like I said, you can also see the errors in here. So if you have a flow that's causing you some issues, you can come in here and kind of see what's, what's happening and, and how often that's happening. 
Again, the power apps is anything that's not dynamic. So your Canvas apps, power apps that don't have the dynamic space on it. Again, I don't have any in this environment, but you'll see that you have the ability to kind of see, again, the usage, how they're being used, who they're being used by, are they using it on what kind of um, device, whether it's mobile or a laptop or computer. And then this data export one is new as well. So there is obviously, it says previewed for the data lake up at the top. If you do have um, any of your Power Apps data syncing over to an Azure data lake, you can do that directly here in the admin center. Like I said, the billing section is in preview. I don't have any environments that are requiring attention. This is just my small environment here that I use for myself. Next is the settings. So again, this is gonna just show you just at a high level um, what settings are turned on across your um, tenant. You can turn things on and off. You can turn Copilot co on. Um, and then you have some trial environment assignments, things like that. So just things that you can turn on and off, you know, as necessary in part of your environment. The resources, the capacity is where you're gonna look at your database storage. So like I said before, um, you get a certain amount of storage with your just start of an environment. And then also for the licenses that you have, you know, purchased uh, through Microsoft, and then you have your file storage as well. So this is a great place to come in and take a look if you're having capacity issues, you will get those warning emails from Microsoft and you can come in here and say, okay, what's taking up the most of my storage. What I really like is that in this Dataverse tab, you can actually look at it by environment. So let's say here in my production, I wanted to see what is taking up the most storage space. There are some things here that you just cannot get rid of. For example, that web resource base down here in the file usage. There are some things that just take storage to keep your environment up and running. For example, that web resource base, you can't get rid of that. Also this plugin assembly base, um, things like that. I clearly don't have a ton of stuff in this environment, but you know, these things you'll wanna keep an eye on. And then, you know, obviously activities can really blow up the environment or if you're running a lot of workflows, creating records, things like that, that will obviously increase. So you can take a look to see what's taking up the most storage and make some decisions there. Here in your Dynamics 365 apps, we went through this through that resources section um, in each environment. Again, you can see here what has been enabled across the environment. You can install things across the entire tenant, but you won't be able to do any updates or things like that. That has to be done on an environment basis. Um, I was in here just a couple of weeks ago and that was not updated. So. Um, you'll see that Power Pages um, is here. This is what was a legacy portal, and you'll be able to manage all of your Power Pages, um, do your configuration, everything like that in here. I don't have any created, but you can, you'll create them and then manage them here. The help and support, this is uh, where you would request assistance from Microsoft uh, the uh, support, the technical support team. So you can see here that you have the ability to create a new support request. As you're going through, definitely identify which product that you're working with, if it's a first party app within CE, or if it's one of these different areas like Business Central, FNO, make sure that you're choosing the right thing because it's um, you wanna end up with the right group in support. Sometimes it can take a lot of time to move in and around to different groups if you don't send it to the right place. Once you get into the next page of this, so I'm gonna go ahead and select project operations. I'm having issues with production and I can say issue with time entry here. Once I go ahead and enter that, this is where that uh, Power Virtual Agent is going to um, kick in. Uh, let's say I'm having an issue with approvals and then it's gonna say get solutions. And you'll see here that uh, the Power Virtual Agent is going to recommend some things, but I also have this virtual agent down here at the bottom where I can kind of chat with that bot and try to find a solution rather than, you know, going to support directly. Obviously you can bypass that and go directly to support and they'll contact you and, and help you as much as they can. So that's how you can interact with the support team through the admin center. The data integration really focuses on that um, integration between like a Dataverse and FNO um, is what it does today. Obviously, I don't have an integration um, set up here, but you do have the ability to, you know, work on that connection set and, and create that here, manage it, especially with like dual right. This is where that comes in. Um, so that's all managed here. The data is in preview, so I'm not going to go into too much detail here, but this is where you can really manage your connections, um, on-premise data gateways, virtual network data gateways, all of that can be managed here. 
And then your policies, I'm not going to go into each one of these, but it is, I think, really helpful to at least review your policies, especially when it comes to things like data. If you are in a country that has um, like GDPR, for example, in Europe, if there are strict data policies, you can set things tenant wide, uh, which is really helpful. And then you also have enterprise policies, billing policies, all of that is in here. There is a link also to other admin centers like Power BI, the M365, and then also Azure Active Directory. So click, uh, quick and easy access to all of those other admin centers that you might need access to. All right, and that's it for our webinar today. A huge thank you to Doug for allowing me to share this information with you and also to MSDW for sponsoring um, and hosting these webinars for us. I think it's a great value uh, for us to kind of get information from a lot of different folks out there who have things to share. If you do have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. I've included my email here, Twitter, LinkedIn. Um, also, make sure you check out the podcast. We also re recently launched a blog if blogs are more your style than podcasts. But thank you so much for, for attending and I uh, look forward to seeing you soon.